When the topic of sports nutrition comes up, the first question that people often ask is what should I eat before I play? Like pretty much everything else in nutrition, or life for that matter, the answer is usually it depends. The short answer is that you want to have a full tank of gas without feeling overly full, but the best pre-match or pre-practice food can vary depending on the time of day and how long you expect to be playing, the weather conditions, time between workouts or matches, available foods, and personal preferences. One of the most challenging aspects of competitive tennis is playing multiple matches in one day. Because there are so many variables, this video will go over some of the major concepts that you can apply to best manage your match day food timing. A quick word up front, the content provided in this presentation is intended as an information resource only and is not meant to treat any medical conditions. If you have any concerns about your health, please contact a healthcare practitioner. Okay, so let's first talk about some of the basics and then we'll look at more specific match day scenarios. Tennis players often sweat out more fluids than they're able to drink each hour, which means that it's really important to start out being adequately hydrated. We lose fluids overnight from sweat and even just by breathing, and so it is likely that many people wake up with some degree of dehydration. Urine color is often suggested as a marker for how well you are hydrated. This can be helpful at times, but it can also be deceiving when used beyond the first morning stream. What I mean by that is, the color of your first morning stream of urine can provide a pretty good overview of how well hydrated you were during the previous 24 hour period. The reason it's not as good of an indicator for other times of the day is that there is an hourly limit to fluid absorption beyond which you will pee out. So for example, if you are dehydrated after losing 5 pounds of water during a match and drink a gallon of water in the span of 10 minutes, your body will absorb some of that fluid but also get rid of much of it. Your urine will turn clear but that doesn't mean you are fully hydrated. In general, you should drink just enough before a match so that you feel sufficiently hydrated, but trying to ingest excess fluids before exercise is generally not an effective strategy because your kidneys will just get rid of the excess body water. Any discussion of pre-match or pre-practice food is challenging because daily practice and competition schedules can vary, as well as personal preferences, class times, travel times, etc. Before we start worrying about the timing of food though, we should remember to first focus on choosing quality food. Now if you think of your body like a car, you want to go on court with your gas tank filled up. There is a high degree of individual variability with regard to how long before playing you need to finish eating, but your pre-match meal should include a balance of carbohydrate, fat, and protein. If you are prone to having stomach issues or have slow digestion in general, choosing foods that are lower in fiber and fat will be a good idea for your pre-match meal. Some people are fine eating right up until match time, while others don't want to have anything in their stomachs while they're on the court. This will require some personal experimentation to figure out what works best for you, but I'll offer some guidelines and potential pitfalls for you to consider. When thinking about your food choices for that pre-match meal, eating unprocessed simple foods is the way to go. A different sport, sure, but this approach to eating is exemplified by the U.S. men's national soccer team and their typical pre-game meals during competition. Three to four hours before the game, they'll have simple, basic foods like grilled chicken or fish, brown or white rice, baked potato, grilled vegetables, salad bar, yogurt, granola, nuts, dried fruit, and fresh fruit. You may want to eat a large meal about three hours before playing and then have a small snack closer to match time. This allows your body to digest and absorb the food without leaving you sluggish on the court. You can then have something small like a banana or a few dates as you're waiting to play. On tournament days this can be tricky because one thing that is fairly unique to tennis is a huge variation between scheduled and actual start times for matches. If you are waiting to go on after another match ends, there could be a two hour window in potential start times. Because of this, having snacks around as you're waiting to go on court is extremely important. To share an example of this, a player that I work with was recently in a tournament that had a number of rain delays. When the rain cleared around 5.30 p.m., he was told that his start time would be 7.30. So that he didn't have too much food in his stomach, he ate a small sandwich, a six inch sub, around 6 p.m. However, because some of the other matches went long and not all courts could be dried, his match ended up going on court about 9.45 p.m. He was smart and was snacking on some dates while waiting to go on, though he probably would have been better off eating another half a sandwich around 7 p.m. as it became clear that his match wasn't going to be going on for a while. He won the first set fairly easily and ended up winning the match after a closer second set. The thing to remember is that some of the most important points of the match came at the end of the second set, which was around 11.15 p.m. and over five hours since his last substantial food intake. If a few key points didn't go his way, he could even have found himself in a third set. In that case, the critical points in the match would have been happening around midnight or over six hours since eating that sandwich. He did a pretty good job of fueling on the court with sports drinks and dates and was able to take care of business. But the key point here is to have foods to snack on while you're waiting to go on. 
Let's now talk about breakfast for a minute. Contrary to what the television commercials may suggest, breakfast does not need to be limited to breakfast foods. This is important because people often don't get enough protein at breakfast, and this can affect you throughout your whole day. If your breakfast consists of some combination of oatmeal, cereal, toast, fruit, and juice, you're not getting enough protein. Adding some eggs will be helpful, but what might be better is to try adding a chicken breast or beef or fish, or eating leftovers from the previous night's dinner. The reason I say that is because one egg contains about 6 grams of protein, and ideally you should include at least 20 to 30 grams of protein at breakfast. Three eggs would be better, but many people would get too full if they were also taking in some carbohydrates. Experiment to see what works for you, but I'd be surprised if adding in some more protein doesn't make you feel better throughout the day. Also, remember that we want to spread our protein intake relatively evenly throughout the day, rather than having very little at breakfast and then a disproportionate amount at dinner. This means that at least about 20% of your daily protein intake should be consumed at breakfast. Now that we've addressed some of the basics of fluid and food intake, let's talk more specifically about what to do on match days when you're playing more than once. Often this could be singles followed by a doubles match, or in college tennis it would be doubles followed by singles. Many junior and collegiate tournaments have two singles matches in one day, and during hard training blocks you may have two sessions per day on the court, or perhaps one on court and one in the gym or on the track. In all of these cases, eating a good breakfast that includes protein and carbohydrate will provide the nutritional foundation for your day. Hydration is also very important throughout the whole day. Again, remember that we often finish exercise in a fluid deficit, so it is vital that we rehydrate properly in between sessions. In addition to rehydrating, consuming carbohydrate after the first session is also very important. If there is enough time to eat, then consume food, but if you don't have time for a meal, then consuming a sports drink can be beneficial, ideally with protein. Let's now talk about a few specific scenarios that commonly come up and how to best manage them. In the collegiate setting, you'll play a doubles match followed by a singles match. If you're the last doubles match to finish, you may only get 10 minutes before singles, but if you're the first match to finish, you could have 30 minutes or longer before your next match, at least if you're in Division 2 or 3. This is a key time to refuel. It is a mistake to think that just because you played a short double set, you won't need to eat or drink before your singles match. Something like sports drink and a banana could be a good choice, or a gel, bar, or other piece of food. Let's think about the schedule for a typical college tennis match day if there is a 1.30 p.m. match. 12 p.m., players would report to the team area. Around 12.15, there might be some foam rolling or a dynamic warm-up. 12.30 might start the on-court hitting warm-up. 1.30, you'd have lineup and introductions, again, for Division 2 or 3. 1.45, would doubles matches start. Around 3 or 3.15, the singles matches would start. And sometime between 4.30 and 6 would be the critical time when close matches may be decided. Because players have to be there at noon, they would have had to eat before then. Perhaps the dining hall isn't open for lunch until noon, they have a commute from home, or have to be in class till 11.45 a.m. The athlete may have eaten their last large meal at 9 or 10 a.m. or even 11 a.m. in the best case scenario. This means there could easily be 6 to 8 hours between the last substantial meal and the most critical parts of the match. I don't care who you are, if you aren't fueling strategically throughout the entire day, then you won't be playing your best tennis when your team needs you the most. Other times you may find yourself playing a singles match followed by a doubles match. Doubles matches are often scheduled after adequate rest, which could mean 15 to 30 minutes depending on the tournament director and the length of your previous match, or perhaps longer if you're lucky. If you've had a hard match, consume about 50 to 70 grams of carbohydrate along with 15 to 20 grams of protein. I would also suggest adding salt to your water or sports drinks if it's been hot and you've been sweating a lot. If you had an easy match, at least drinking some sports drink along with a banana could work well to refill the gas tank a bit. Don't be fooled into thinking you should just drink water between matches. And the last scenario I'll talk about is having two singles matches in one day or two practice sessions, morning and afternoon. Consuming a recovery drink that contains carbohydrate and protein such as chocolate milk or a commercial recovery powder, immediately after the first match or practice is a good idea to refuel and rehydrate, particularly if you don't have an appetite right away. If you have a few hours in between matches or practices, eat a large meal that includes carbohydrate and protein. This could be chicken and rice, salmon and potatoes, etc. You should also salt your food liberally at this meal. For those who like numbers, you should aim to consume 1.2 to 1.5 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight immediately after the first session, and then repeat that every hour for up to 4 hours. Remember, to get kilograms, divide your weight in pounds by 2.2. You can also drink some tart cherry juice in between matches to reduce inflammation. If the weather is hot and you've been sweating a lot, this is an important time to load up on fluids and electrolytes. This can be from chocolate milk, sports drink, tart cherry juice, or again by adding salt to your water or sports drinks. So to summarize what we've talked about here, 
Have breakfast with at least 20 to 30 grams of protein. Experiment with the size of your pre-match meal and the amount of time needed between the meal and the start of your warm-up. Have foods to snack on as you're waiting to start your match, particularly in the event of unforeseen delays. And take advantage of your time in between matches to top up the gas tank. This can be from food or sports drink, depending on the amount of time you have. Thank you all for listening. I hope you all enjoyed this presentation and learned something you can apply. Please feel free to reach out to me via email, rd at trifitla.com, or through my website, eatsleep.fit. Thanks again.